Hey guys, welcome back and hello to 2017. This is the Long Tail Build series, video five. So to quickly recap the previous videos, we recycled some frames and extracted the tubes and dropouts to be used on this build. I messed up the top tube and had to redo it. We left off with tubes mitered for the main triangle and ready to tack. In this video, I'm kind of back where I started. I decided to go with a 135mm axle instead of a 110mm BMX axle. So I'll show you guys my plans for that. I'll do some test welds on a dummy seat tube binder and finally end things off with a set of custom dropouts. Let's get started. Okay, so a change of plans. The first thing I'll show you guys is what I had for the rear hub. It's a 110 millimeter BMX axle, which may have been okay, but after reading a few comments, first by Rock Shandy and then from Cycle Trucks, I decided to go with a 135 millimeter axle. This was their recommendation, and it's a really good idea for a number of reasons. The main reason being options. I could, for example, decide I want gears on this bike, and uh, if I had gone with a 110, that's pretty much impossible. But uh, with a more standard 135, I have the option to throw on an integrated gear hub, for example. Okay, now for the reason not to use a 110 millimeter BMX hub. Nearly all of these hubs have a micro drive. Basically, it's a freewheel mechanism that sits inside the hub so that the cog can have uh, as few as nine teeth. If I need to go higher, I can only go up uh, one tooth and uh, a 10 tooth cog was all I could find. Another commenter, uh, Cyphers, Cyphers Block, uh, warned of the chain hitting the chainstay. And uh, this is a really good point and a real possibility. So a larger cog will hopefully reduce the possibility of that happening. To accommodate the new axle size, I turned a new 135 millimeter dummy axle. These changes also mean I should not use BMX cranks, so no mid bottom bracket. Instead, I'm going with a 73 millimeter bottom bracket shell and a one by crank set. And for the tubes, because of the smaller bottom bracket shell, I need to miter a new down tube and make an adjustment to the seat tube miter. And while at it, I was not happy with the top tube. Uh, reason being, I used a 0.049 wall tube, which is not too thick and heavy, uh, but uh, compared to the other down tube, which I think is an 035 butted tube, it's noticeably heavier. For the first miter, we'll adjust the seat tube to bottom bracket shell junction. Right now, it's cut for a BMX bottom bracket shell. We need it to fit a 38 millimeter diameter shell. Just a skim off the tube with a 38 millimeter hole saw will do the trick. Here's a look at the new fit up. Now we'll do the uh, down tube, starting off at the front where it meets the head tube. And now the end that meets the bottom bracket shell. Finishing it off with a notch for the C-tube. Something I started doing for the C-tube cut is undercutting it just a hair. I'll go back and forth a few times and test fitting it and then shaving a hair more off each time. If you take off too much, you cannot put it back. This is a pretty good way to ensure a tight fit up. And finally, the top tube.
All right, with my tubes all mitered, I thought it would be fun to weigh the difference between the 049 wall top tube and the new 035 wall top tube. The 049 is about 430 grams, while the 035 is about 330 grams. Not a huge difference, but it just felt right to do this since I was redoing all these miters anyway. Now to test these fit ups. And we're looking pretty good. After finally getting these tubes mitered for real this time, I'm ready to weld up the triangle. But before starting that, I better see if the seat clamp will fit on the seat tube. And as I suspected, it doesn't fit because the seat tube is externally butted. So we have a few options. Machine a larger seat tube clamp turn down the top of the seat tube to a smaller diameter or weld on an integrated seat clamp. I chose to integrate it and uh, picked up some binders from Paragon Machine Works, part number MS2001. This binder will take a standard M6-1 socket cap screw. Out of curiosity, I compared it to one of the frames I chopped and the Paragon binder is a bit larger I assume this is to give us uh, the option to trim it down to a desired size. I marked one end off where I'll trim it. Uh, that's the uh, fat sharpie mark. And then I marked the center for where it will be mitered. Never did one of these before, but cutting in two millimeters seems about right. Here's how that looks on the seat tube. Now I'm trimming the excess on the threaded side. And here's what I ended up with. My plan is to weld this, and having never welded one of these before, I went ahead and turned myself a test slug. I posted a pic of it on Instagram, and some folks had some great suggestions. Joe says, be aware that the ones that are pre-drilled and tapped are going to heat up differently. Then Third Coast Bike Works says, brazing works really well for that kind of stuff. Do you have brazing stuff? and Veteran Bicycle agrees with those guys. So I made myself another slug with a board hole to more closely resemble the real deal. Okay, on to welding the dummy slug. We'll tack it up first. Getting my shaky hand down in there. I haven't welded in a while. I really should practice at least once a week. In fact, that will be one of my goals this year. Now to tack the other side. I don't know why I tacked it this way. Um, it, I just let it kind of like ball and then drip in there. You shouldn't do that. Okay, time to lay a weld. And here's how that turned out. Welding the other side now. And uh, I stopped recording because I was finding it difficult to shoot and practice weld this slug. So, cut to the finished result. 
All right, now for a more realistic test. Let's weld the slug with a bore in it. My argon is getting really low, but it's uh, it's actually reading empty. Um, should be okay. We just test welding, so we'll be alright. Sorry guys, no more close-up welding shots. Uh, someday I'll figure out a good way to shoot close-ups, but right now it's a major pain if you're trying to shoot uh, something and weld something. It's just a pain, especially if you're practicing a weld and trying to get the weld to look or come out right. So uh, yeah, maybe maybe another time I'll do some, some real close-up welding shots. Okay, here's both top and bottom sides. Now I'm welding the end that isn't bored. Here's how that turned out. And now for the hard part. Here's the result. Not terrible, but I'm not a fan of how it cut into the edge here. After these tests, it was clear I would have to change a few things if I'm uh, fixed on TIG welding the boss on there. Instead, I heeded the words of my fellow builders and got myself a simple map gas setup. Uh, I will silver braze the binder on there instead. Unfortunately, I have no flux or silver wire, so I have to stop this process here. Let us move on to the dropouts. Because of the drivetrain change, the dropouts also need to change. I wasn't happy with the dropouts I had recycled, so this is a good opportunity to make some new ones. I also updated my drawings to accommodate these changes, and uh, in the process drew up some custom dropouts. We'll use this 4130 3 inch thick plate. The plate had a compressed edge from a shearing operation. It seemed like a good idea to avoid overlapping the dropout on this edge. I then cut a set of holes. And cut another set on the other plate to be threaded. The idea is to secure the two plates together so that I can make both dropouts at the same time. The screws uh, poke through a bit, so I ground those flush. Drawing lines from the template. I set it up in the mill and started cutting. After about a minute, I noticed it had moved. This is one of those operations where I thought I could save some time but then the reality of doing this on a mini mill comes into play. I could probably have made it work by securing it differently, but I don't own a roughing mill and this cut would have taken forever. So bandsaw to the rescue. While making this cut, I realized I should drill a hole for the inside of the slot. So back to the mill.
Back to the mill again for finishing. And checking size before I remove the part. Pretty happy with how this turned out. Some cleanup in the belt sander. And voila, dropouts. Okay guys, uh, that is a wrap for this video. I'll have a link to Cycle Trucks in the description. They've got some cool looking cargo bikes. I like the compact nature of their bikes. So check out their YouTube channel to see them in action. In the next long tail build video, I hope to silver braze the binder on the seat tube. If the uh, flux and solder doesn't arrive in time, maybe I'll start the chain stays. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.